Let's do that thing where we take a look at some of the vintage and retro items that I sell online. Is there a bird right outside my window? A woodpecker up there. I didn't know woodpeckers chirped. The first one is actually something that is going overseas. I don't know where because it's through the uh, eBay global shipping program. So what they do is I create a label to ship it to Kentucky, I believe is how they do it. And then they take care of the customs and all that kind of stuff. So I'm only sending this to Kentucky, but I know that it said it's sold through the global shipping program and it is Frank Cable. I think that's what it is. Yeah, because they spelled out his name all Art Deco-y. Frank Carl, that's what it was. So it's a set of 78 records. It's four of them. He's a jazz pianist going overseas. I'm curious to see. I find out where it goes after it's been delivered. A game called Mixin' Faces. This is from the 1970s and it is 24 cards that are different sections of a person's head from the top, middle, I almost said model. I don't know what I almost said. From the top, middle, bottom. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Middle and bottom, I was going to come down. That's, I mean, that's literally all it is. It's just these illustrated faces. And that was a game, and the concept was to make funny faces, and it was for children. There you go, mixing faces. There is, uh, at one of the estate sales, I think, that we recorded recently, there were a bunch of books sitting outside, and one of them was this uh, Walt Disney book. It's a canvas book. It's, it's the entire thing is made out of a canvas material, like it's textured and everything. And inside there's paintings like this of Walt Disney character, or of Walt Disney's Dopey in this particular one. And it's from 1938. And inside are just paintings like this with a story on this canvas that was bent into a book. I thought that was kind of neat. I'd never seen it before. Part of a collection of thermalware, thermalware that I got. This one I found interesting, but it's definitely not one of the better ones. It is a thermal, thermal cup. Why am I having such a hard time saying that? Of President Jimmy Carter. It must have been part of a presidential set because why would you just make one? And it says the, what does it say? The 39th president. So I'm assuming there were ones for every president. I'm trying to move to an angle where it's not getting all kinds of sunlight glare on it or it's too shadowed. There we go. Nah, that's still not good. But it's it's got a clear handle. It's plastic. It's just got the picture wrapped inside. I feel like these are things that I'm amazed we don't make them today because they look like something that would be really easy to mass produce or like to order online. And then I got a Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse bank. I think I showed you these ones in the recent haul video that I did of stuff I got. And I had two of them. We sold them separately and the Mickey Mouse one sold the other day and then this one sold. And it's it seems kind of weird to break them up. It's like now she's gonna be all alone somewhere else, but it's still got the tag on it. I think this is from the 80s, if I remember. And it's just a little Minnie Mouse bank. And then of course, more illustrated books. It is Raggedy Ann and Andy, The Tunnel of Lost Toys. So this is a book that was based on a TV special. The illustrations are by Vernon McKissack. I said that weird, McKissack. It's from 1980. And it's got some, I could see this being 80s style. It actually kind of looks like the uh, Ricky Ticky Tavi cartoon. And it's got a neat little dark cover. So Raggedy Ann and Andy. This next one I knew was interesting and I knew it would get some views and it did. It got a lot of views and it got a lot of offers. And then finally somebody bought it for a full price. I had a bunch of offers waiting on it. And it is a Schlitz beer can bank from the 1970s. It's just a can of Schlitz and the flat top like they used to have. There's something inside of it. Huh. Anyway, so it's got that, this, the logo, and it's even the way they used to make the tin cans where it's got the seam on the side. G.I. Joe lunchbox. 
And this one is, so it's a plastic one from the 80s. It's got the metal clasp and not the weird little, it was what they did after a while is they stopped putting the metal ones on there and they just had like a plastic hook that looked like this that would always break. So here's the metal one. It's even got some kid's name on it. And uh, that one went pretty quick. And also this is another one where it got a lot of offers at first and then somebody just bought it. So G.I. Joe decal there. Uh, oh, there's, uh, oh, I forget what he was based on. Or was it actually Sergeant Slaughter that they added to the cartoon? I can't remember. I want to say it is. Sergeant Slaughter from the WWF became one of the G.I. Joe members. And there's some of the team. This is more of the comic book or poster style rather than the cartoon style. But there you go. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe, real American hero. G.I. Joe. A Raggedy Ann ornament. No, that's Raggedy Andy. A Raggedy, well, it's still in the package. It says Raggedy Ann ornament on it, but it's Raggedy Andy, obviously. And just a little ornament. It's that time of year where ornaments start selling again. Although, no, I sell them year round, whatever. I also wanted to show this just because I think it's neat and I'm surprised it hasn't gone yet. I have an old McGruff the crime dog take a bite out of crime keychain. And I think that's neat. And I don't know why I thought it would go faster. I kind of don't want it to because I just think it's really cool. So that's a look at some of the stuff that people were interested in and picked up today.